No hoods in the meeting, Paul. There you go. We are out. Don't worry. Yeah, but it's just the only thing I, one of the few things I ask players to do. So. I'm not a player. I, we don't know. We, <laughs> goes without saying. Hi, Teresa. Good afternoon, Mike. Mike, you talk about this team being at a crossroads. What has to happen to go the right direction? Is it is it offense, defense, execution? Well, it's it's everything, and and. The, the point that I was trying to make and that I try to tell them is that you, you have to be playing your best football late in the season. And that's just what happens in the National Football League. There's all this jockeying for position. Um, you know, some teams that, you know, every year end up, you know, with a really good record. And there's some other teams that kind of toil around and they're kind of figuring it out. But then they continue to improve. There's some teams that kind of go in the other direction. And, and we've always gone... Uh, in the direction of, of, of playing our best football late and, and, and improving. And we have to find ways to do that. And so uh, there is no um, one answer. It's not about uh, one particular player. It's not about one particular side of the football, uh, all three phases. And, you know, obviously coaching, we all have to be better. Are lineup changes potentially on the table at this juncture? Well, I mean, I think we'll look at everything. I, you know, I just, we only have so many guys at this point in time with – uh, a lot of guys on um, on injured reserve. We have guys that you know, probably may or may not come back this week. We'll see uh, where we are with Racy uh, and Josh Thompson. Those guys could could potentially be back. Uh, their time is is up, and you know Racy's been working hard um, to try to get back. So you know, we'll see where those guys are this week and, and what we can do with them. Well, I think you're always trying to look at that. I think you have to find ways to, um, you know, still stay balanced, you know, still still do things um, and, and make adjustments you know, with who we have and, and looking at, you know, whether that's defensively or, or offensively, how we have to um, you know, give ourselves the best chance to win the game. I understand that when you say it's not about one player because it's an 11-player thing, but when the – if one player is not doing his thing or is consistently underperforming, isn't that a disservice to the to the other ten? And can't that hurt the team that way? Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I think that that's um, you know always something that would um, not be beneficial. Um, but but I don't think that there's such a, a standout or such of. You have to look at who who's going to be playing in there. You have to look at some of the things. It's not all it's not all bad with every guy that you're going to tell me isn't playing well. Uh, there's certainly some 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 plays that we we can't have if we want to win uh, at, at some of uh, the positions. You know, so we we have to make sure we're doing everything we can to to get the guys in positions to to understand and be able to do their job, and then find out if there's somebody else that. That we have that can can help us better than that. You, you kind of waved up a question about Dennis yesterday. You've gone through 16 defensive backs on the roster to find the right solution, but you plugged in Dennis when Taylor went down, down and and haven't done anything else there. What's, what's yeah? I would say after yesterday, there wasn't a solution um, in, in any phase. You know, so I wouldn't say that that, that we had any solutions in any phase. Um, speaking specifically for Dennis, you know, there, there are, um, you know, you can go through them. You know, there's plays where I, I think it's uh, he, he's doing his job, and then there's plays where, you know, we know we can't get beat inside. You know, we're chipping for him, and, and you, can't, you can't get beat inside. And you, critical error in third and one, we've had guys jump off sides before, but certainly in the red zone, things are magnified. Um, you know, I think on one of the sacks that he gave up, uh, had Josh Sweat at 10 or 11 yards at the top of the pocket. Um, to me, anybody that's blocking Josh Sweat, if they block him at 10 yards at the top of the pocket, we're, we're going to have to be able to step up. And guess what? The quarterback couldn't step up. So, yep, th those are things that, you know, and then there were some other plays that aren't very good that, you know, we had a, we had a backside cutoff on a four eye where, you know, he butted him under the chin, his hands were inside, and he, and he pancaked him. And, but, you know, there's, there's, when you play that position, you know, there's some 
some things that, that, that are glaring when you get beat. So he, he's, he's going to work hard. The Ravens going to be have a chance to compete. Um, but that, that's who we got on the roster right now. When you, the you mentioned the struggles over the last few weeks, is that something where the opposition, is it what they're doing? What is execution not going right on, on your behalf? Like what is behind the recent struggles? In the running game, or what did you say? In the ground game, yeah. Yeah, the ground, yeah we we gotta we have to find ways to to create some space for Derek. Uh, that when I when I tell you that he's a unique player, he is. And but also coming with that is is we have to find ways to create some space. We've got to get him. You know the X plays are coming. You know with him at the second level, and you know whether he tries the corner or, or not, you know that that's on him. Like we hand him the football. Uh, he decides to stay front side. Okay, great. Like he decides to bounce it out on the corner. Uh, that that's on him. We've we've given him the football, and we have a lot of trust in him. And um, so there, that that happens sometimes. But then other times, we there's, there's got to be some space. And and again, he's got to help us uh, find that space. And and so does the line, and and so does the the scheme. It's all it's all connected. And and I trust it. Trust me. We're we're working hard to try to get it and to try to figure it out. Uh, and, and try to get him going and get our offense going so that we can stay balanced and, and use all those things to help us. With the lack of space that has been there for Derek over the last four weeks, do you think your offense needs a shift in identity, and is that possible to do this late into the season? Um, yeah, I think you have to be careful. You know, what, what identity would, would we want to go with is, I guess, the, the question. You know, we have to understand what we think wins in this league, and I'm going to remind you that it's taking care of the football, it's, it's running the football, and it's being efficient when you pass it. And those are the three things for the past 25 years in this league um, that has won. And so that's what I want our identity to be uh, because I know that that's what wins. And when we've won, uh, we've done those things. And so maybe we could have run the ball a little better. We didn't turn it over. Neither did they. So we didn't do enough defensively. We clearly didn't affect their quarterback. We had a 90-some rating. He had 130. So that, that's what I stand by. That's what I coach and teach every day. Uh, and that's what uh, I'm trying to get our team to do. You talked about Clark earlier this year, Mike. I know you mentioned it's difficult <clears throat> for, for anybody, him included, to, to come in and, and jump into a lineup you know, after missing training camp offseason. Has he had enough time now or, or that you know, things might change in that regard that – Sure, anything could change right now. Yeah, I mean, just you know, looking for for ways to to win a football game and looking for ways to to move the ball and score in the red zone and not be 0 for two. Looking for ways to to affect the quarterback and not give up X plays and looking for ways to cover punts and punt better. You know, all all the stuff that adds up. But you guys just focus on a few little things. So I'm just going to try to look at the the whole holistic. You know. Guys that, that were here uh, with the Dennis and the options that are here. With those defensive backs, you had a ton of guys who are contributing here who weren't here. So the, I, I think my, my question is, like, uh, why aren't you looking outside for offensive line help the way you looked outside for defensive back help when all of those defensive backs have done such a terrific job helping? Um. You know, you have an option of, of finding guys on somebody's practice squad uh, that you can poach. You have the option uh, to sign guys off the street, which I, I, I don't know what would be there. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm, we're, we're, we're looking for players that are there. You know, we've signed, signed a lot of guys off other people's practice squad that, that are playing for us. So at, at, at some point, you know, we got to figure if the, you know, they're not playing for them. You know, they're going to play for us. Is Trilin at the start of the concussion protocol process? He's doing well, I guess, if that's what you're asking. He's feeling well. And uh, we'll see how he uh, progresses through the week. But that's, I'm, I'm happy to see him after the game, see him when we landed, see him this morning. So he's doing well. You've been through this before, but how difficult does that make it when you've got a guy that you just don't know how it's going to look come Friday or Saturday and trying to prepare? Everybody will have to prepare. Uh, you know, as a starter, you know, we saw that yesterday, and uh, I think it's probably a good lesson learned um, by, by CJ and, and offensively, you know, being ready to go uh, if something happens. Mike, you had the field goal.
goal penalty against the Bengals, and then you get another one this last week. Is that just guys trying to do too much? Uh, no, I, I think it's ridiculous. I think it, I think it's ridiculous. So um, to go out there and call safe block two weeks in a row and knock the shit out of the center and then jump off sides like. I guess safe punt's going to mean line up a yard, <clears throat> a yard off uh, behind the line of scrimmage, and, and have uh, four guys up there. I, I don't know, but we'll have to do something that's so utterly ridiculous to not get a penalty on a safe block. Was it hit on Burks and the Jackson Ward deep play? Uh, I don't know. I, I think I think the league office handles that. I think Troy Perry and, and Walt handle those. So not, it's, that's not done on the field. It, again, you guys. Should, just reach out to them. I, I, I haven't I gotten a response yet. Mike, you talk about teams need to be playing their best ball this time of year in December. What gives you the confidence that this team can be playing its best well, ball? Because now? that's that's our job. That's what we've always done. You know, I'm confident uh, in in uh, in this staff. I'm confident in the players. You know, to make sure that we you know figure out ways to win a football game. You laid out some of the keys to running the ball, turnovers, throwing efficiently when you need to. There's been some teams around the league. Last few weeks that have run the ball, and then the next week they've been almost all pass. Is this team built to do that if necessary to win a game? Um, yeah, I mean, I think we have to always find ways to, you know, give ourselves the best chance to win. And we don't, you know, you get behind, you kind of run out of options, you know, and you have to. Um, you know, we'll, we'll continue to search and find ways to, you know, move the ball and, you know, again, get some stops. It's all complimentary. You know, it's hard to play defense in this league uh, without getting turnovers. It's hard to drive the ball 85 yards to get touchdowns. You see last night the difference that turnovers make in short fields and defensive scores and special teams uh, X plays. He's got to get his head turned around on that, on that PI call. But the league doesn't reward overthrows. Does the competition committee need to look at rewarding underthrows? which is something we've seen, I think, a lot of the last couple of years? Well, there's been conversation about it. Um, and, and again, they, they will if, if you get back and you're in phase. And, you know, I've noticed that they let some contact go if guys are in phase and they turn around and they're maybe pushing the guy. So, again, I think the only way to properly and, and consistently officiate it, this is just me talking, is that you have a standard. And the standard is if you're not playing the ball, that your contact um, is probably going to be uh, penalized if the receiver does their job and makes an attempt to come back. And I think it's just so that it's consistent. Everybody sees it and everybody says, yep, unfortunately, that's DPI. Receiver, you know, defender not playing the football and a receiver going back and, and getting two arms across the, the, the shoulder pads of, of the defensive player. So just so that there's not any egregious <clears throat> you know, mistakes. Side of that equation, offensive PI, right? When you look now that you've gotten to see it, the double move that AJ had on Christian Fulton. I mean, what is he is Christian supposed to do in that situation? Not sit on the route, or um, you know, I mean, I think we could say he could get over there a uh, half a second sooner, and then he'd be entitled to that space. I still don't think it's going to get called. You know, I mean, I, that's they'll that's what they'll tell me is that the defender's entitled to that space and. You know, if the receiver runs into him, it's OPI. I think we all know that that's not going to be the case. So play more physical um, and, and, and play more physical as a receiver for us, too. You know what I mean? When we're, when we're doing it. Because you know, that, that's just what it's going to be. The, the OPIs, it's not, not getting called. A couple guys said that. The coverage uh, a little bit earlier. Anything in particular that you, that you noticed that they were getting a few of those good returns on yesterday? What would you think? Uh, I don't know if there's anything in particular, but it wouldn't. wouldn't I don't. Enough we we it. only thought that three of the seven punts were of adequate hang time, so you know when we choose to bang it down the field, which we feel like that's a strength of Stoney's. Stoney's got to do his part, and and the ones that towards the end of the last two that he put, you know, were four six, four seven hang time, looked like we went down and covered them proficiently. It just <clears throat> puts too much stress, and, and again we could cover. Better, you know, we have to cover better. We can't guarantee that it's going to be a five-second hang time. Um, and we've been through this. You have to keep running. 
You know, the first guy's got to try to come to balance and make the guy go lateral or make the play and then, you know, cast a net, get everybody in some lanes and, and not, not let them bounce outside or, um, you know, stretch and cut. So we, we, it starts with a better punt and then obviously the, the, the net coverage has to be better. Preaching togetherness as, as kind of the solution to the downturn. I, I understand the importance of that, but is togetherness the thing that, how does togetherness make up the gap in, in skill and execution that we've seen the last couple of weeks? Well, <clears throat> I think we always want to start with, you know, doing things together. And, uh, you know, when you hit, you know, a, a rough patch or you go through a tough week personally, you know, you get around people that, that you care about and that you trust. I think that that's important. Uh, not straying away and, and getting in small groups. Uh, I think you try to get together in large groups and, and figure out ways to, to help. And, you know, and I think that that's, you know, when you take that approach in all three phases, you get 11 guys working together. Um, you know, sometimes the plays look a little better and the communication, the coverage, um, whether you're in combination coverage and that that works a little better, or you're working up front and you know finding ways to help each other, or offensively finding ways to to let the whether, whatever the play is, you know, marry off. There's there's guys that have jobs of getting over the top, guys underneath, whatever it may be, you know, in the run game. So that's it's just kind of what we've always tried to do around here, and not let guys stray and splinter. And you know, everybody's going to have an opinion and. Uh, you know, the one that matters is is the one that's best for the team here with, with everybody doing it together. Rice, he, didn't mention Kyle. Is he still rehabbing and trying to do Yeah. What, what is Rice's challenge if he does come to practice after not practicing since uh, August? So I think that the challenge, um, Jim, is that we are conscious of Racy's, you know, overall, you know, body I think that making sure that he's recovered from from his injury but then also that we're just not the volume doesn't get thrown on him because he's doing special teams and receiver and you know he may be you know his hip may feel better but at what cost to other soft tissue so we just want to make sure that as we work his way back and return to play that he can handle that volume because when he was re rehabbing you know, don't feel like he was able to you know, do things that he would normally be doing to maintain his speed or, or that force or the power that, that race he has. In terms of the so I'm conscious of that. That's what I'm trying to be careful of. In terms of some of the struggles <clears throat> yesterday that the receivers had in the past game, how much of that do you put on Ryan just not having enough time to get them the ball versus them not being able to get open? It's the same thing. Yeah, I mean, we, again, I, I, I thought we protected well well enough in the first half and, and not well enough in the second half. And there were some, some times where we had some clean pockets and you know we have to, we have to be in spaces. Uh, we have to have spacing uh, in, in zone coverage and then we have to have route craft and man coverage. So that, that's, it all goes hand in hand. Back on Racy for a second, do you need him more right now to help at receiver or on special teams if he's going to be limited in the number of snaps he can play? Um, you know, I think we'll just kind of see how that goes and how it how he feels throughout the week. How much confidence do you guys have in CJ receiver? What did you see from him kind of in those first exposure? Well, I know that he worked extremely hard, you know, with Rob to, to be ready. Um, had some, you know, you know, mistakes where, you know, again, it's going fast and it's his first game action and with the game plan and things like that. So, you know. Thought he thought he did okay. Thought there was some obviously some plays and alignments and execution that he'd like to have back, and I think he'll be better uh, the more more exposure he gets. It's Chig kind of done uh, to to earn some more snaps out there, and then to you know kind of answer the challenge and, and be more productive out there too in those snaps. Yeah, I mean it just he's working hard and understanding. You know I mean he plays special teams for us and plays you know, offense and you know. We got to continue to, to to find ways to to get him the ball, and got to continue to find ways to have him help us in the run game. You know, it's not just a situation where you put him in there and it's you know it's a pass that doesn't work for for anybody. So to keep searching for ways to to again stay balanced in in what we're trying to do.